formula? Well, let's, let's even go further than that. How do we know what's new? Do you know the old stuff? What's old about copper? Now this is where we would have went to the library, right? Now naturally I'm doing a compound that has two atoms. Right? But let's just say, I mean we're hypothetical, we would go to the library. And I want you to tell me everything that's been done with copper and chlorine chemistry to date. Go ahead. You guys know this. Well, okay. Bella's telling me she went to the library down at the University of Florida and she found out that copper had a plus one charge and a plus two charge. Did she find anything else to, to date for, or, for copper? What's that? Yes, no, maybe. No, she didn't. Okay. Now what does chlorine, what charge does it go when it's in these binary compounds? Negative one. So we could make a compound that was CuCl. We could make another compound that was what? Alright. If we did that, would that be interesting? No. That is well and established. So anytime you do research, alright, the number one thing, and it's a drag, man. I mean, it is a serious drag to go to the library and be sure that whatever it is you're doing has never been done. All right. Now certainly we have ways to go about that, but even though we got ways to go about that, that's no fun. All right. Now a place like Auburn, you, you don't have a normal librarian, right? Did you guys know that? You have history librarians, chemistry librarians, biology librarians. Do you know how many chemistry librarians they, they applied at Auburn? Four. We had four librarians that did nothing but help us. All right. I mean, that's how complicated it is to be sure that nothing has ever been done before. All right? Now, so what would happen if somebody made a compound like this? What would be the name of that compound? Copper? What charge would it have? Four. Chloride. Now, if some joker in his classroom made that, would that be good or bad? That'd be good. That's never been done before. There's a reason that's never been done before. All right. What if somebody made this right here? CuCl8, that'd be called what? Copper 8 chloride. See, that'd be good too. Anything other than that would be ideal. Because, see, if you're in the business of making new things, what do you want to do? Make new things. If you're in the business of making old things, well, that's no good, right? Okay, so here's what's happening. You have your assignment, right? Everybody goes and leaves. And you're going to come back, and you're going to have samples for me. Well, it turns out out of all 20 of you guys, only one person has got results. All right? And let's just say that it's Sandy. So here's what Sandy's got. She's bringing me a jar, and inside of that jar is this. She's happy. I'm happy. She's the only one in this room that got anything. All right? And by the way, that's not unusual. All right, so what'd she get? Well, we're going to run a test on this, and here's what she got. She got 47.2% copper, and she got 52.8% chlorine. Now, this test that she run is something that's called EDAX. It stands for Elemental Diffraction Analysis. Point of story is they're generally located in mechanical engineering buildings, is you take this to the mechanical engineers and like in 20 minutes they'll say, okay, I have no idea what you got in here, Sandy, but here's what I know. 47.2% copper, 52.8% chlorine. It's up to her now to figure out what it is. Well, she did the first part of the assignment good. The first part says, name, make something that contains copper and chlorine only. Did she do that? 
Yeah, so that's good. All right. Now, did she make the right stuff? Well, who knows? The first thing that you're going to do when you're working these problems is you're going to change that percent to grams. Now, I am working on page uh, 147. This is number 32B. And as you can see, you know, a lot of times I just make up stuff. You can't make these up. All right. That's the reason I went to the book. You have to have real numbers or you're going to get something screwed up. All right. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is change this percent to grams. How am I going to do that? Erase it. Wow, I like Jennifer's attitude. She says, that's just erase. Whoop. Just like that. Anybody got a problem with how to do step one? Just erase it. So anytime you see a percent, like on page 143, 32B, just erase the percent and change it to G. Now the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to change that grams to moles. Now what tool would you use for that? The periodic table. Alright, so get your nose in the periodic table and tell me how many grams of copper is in one mole of copper. Everybody speak at once. Is it 58-ish or is it 63? 63.55. Now let me just say a word here about these numbers. Okay? If you were really working with me, like if we had a serious job together, all right, and you guys were my colleagues, I just would not call hydrogen 1. Hydrogen weighs 1.0079. I would not call carbon 12. Carbon does not weigh 12. It weighs 12.01. Chlorine does not weigh 35. It weighs 35.45. So if you're in a real world, that's what old Joe would be doing. But see, I'm up here without a periodic table, so I just kind of by memory put down numbers. But understand, in a real world, you would not want to do that. All right. Chlorine is 35.5. For one mole of chlorine. Alright, is everybody happy with that? So the first thing I've done is change from a percent to a gram. The next thing I've done is did what? Went from a gram to a mole. Where do I get these numbers? Coming from the periodic table, right? No special place, just coming straight from the periodic table. 47.2 divided by 63.55. That equals 0 0.743 and 52.8 divided by 35.5 is 1.487. So what have I done? I've converted to moles. Now if I'm looking for ratios about how this stuff is connected, uh, what do, I, what do you think I need to do? How would you get ratios here? Divide this by what? The smallest. Whatever your smallest thing is, divide it by. Let's write it down, right? I have a running list over here. So the next thing you're going to do is divide by the smallest number. Okay? So this is 0 0.743, which is 1. 0 0.743. Alright, so 1.487 divided by 2.00. Okay. So, how many chlorines does Sandy have in her compound? Two. How many coppers does she have? What has she made? What's the name of this compound? Copper 2 chloride. Okay. So did she do anything for me? No. Extremely common, by the way. Right? So many times people think that just any time she picks up something, it's just going to make something new every single day, and you're going to go through the life playing a flute. And that's not going to work. All right. 
Sometimes you go six, seven, eight months. And that gets into another conversation about psychological games. I mean, those are extreme mental games. Can you imagine working 12 hours a day for eight months and not have one compound? Not one. Okay? And of course, you know, your bosses are on top of you. Like, well, you know, Sandy, I know that, that chemistry is a hard science and that, but you're going to have to just clean this up or you're going to go work for Sears. You know, I mean, you're going to have to find something to do with your life. But then what will happen, though, is a lot of times it'll hit you all at once. And, she'll, and it'll, hit you at the, it'll hit you at the most unexpected time. I'm serious. She'll go to the beach for a weekend, come back, completely hung over, strung out, sunburn, and there'll be eight different compounds lined up in her reactions. And she's like, what's this? And all eight of them are hit. she get a whole paper done. All right. So uh, anyway, are we good with how to do this? All right. Well, why don't you guys try one, and we'll take a break simultaneously. Does anybody have a solutions manual? Let me, let me have it. Because there is a little small curveball that I will throw you in a little while, but I want to be sure I'm not throwing you the curveball now. And there's no way for me to know it unless I work the problem. So let me just quickly um, hit the answer. Here. Let's see number 32. All right. So let's see here. Oh, yeah, that's a curveball. I didn't do that one. That's a curveball. This one is not. D. So let's see here. Let's do 33. No, 32. D as in dog. All right, 32 D. On the same page. All right. And uh, let's work that. Take us a break and come back, and I'll help you in 15 or 20 minutes.